being cute and cuddly, our pets can leave us flustered, but not anymore. From poor petty cat to mystifying medical problems, my pet shame aims to help owners in a pickle. Tonight, we meet Whisper the Serial Killer Ferret, Toby the Green Slime Drooling Horse, Clouseau the Weeing Cat, and Columbo the Flatulent Pug Dog. Across Britain, pets are showing up their owners with their fighting, hissing, and licking. It's time to put a stop to petty misdemeanours with a helping hand from the Pet Shame Clinic. With over 14 years' experience, vet Mark Abraham is on hand to tackle those cringesome critters. Too often, we've swept weird and wacky pet problems under the carpet, but now it's time to air and share. And one who enjoys airing and sharing more than most is our first pet, Pug Dog Columbo. When owner Amy first set eyes on the puppyish pug dog, she knew she just had to have him. But it wasn't long before Amy realised that nine-month-old Columbo was less a perfect pooch and more a pungent pug. <laughs> This is Columbo, and he's my pet shame as he's got serious gas problems. <laughs> Columbo lives in a hip part of East London with Amy and her partner James. But Columbo's letting the side down with his backside. He lets off a really potent amount of gas whenever he feels like it in any particular situation. And people think it's me, or people think it's my boyfriend, but for such a small dog, it's disproportionately stinky. Atomic. Gas in dogs is not unusual, but Columbo's emissions really take the doggy biscuit. It really is the most acrid, disgusting smell you could ever possibly wish to have bestowed on you. He's, 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 a, he's almost vicious, I would say. Atomic. Despite being tiny, his flatulence is silent and violent, letting rip up to five times in one sitting. And he doesn't just save it for home. Some of the city's finest delis have suffered the curse of Columbo. When he lets one go in, in public, <laughs> if people are eating, then you get really do get embarrassed. And you say, I'm really sorry, it's, 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 it's my dog. And you tend to just smile and hope, you just, fingers crossed, hope that, that, that they see the funny side as well and they laugh. I think one of these days somebody is actually going to be sick when he farts next to them and I don't, I don't want to have to clear that up either. <laughs> Hiya, Amy. Nice Hello, to Charlie. meet you. Oh, and this is Columbo. Oh, he's absolutely adorable. So, did you name him after the famous detective? Yeah. I can see the similarity. It looks like he's wearing a trench coat. He's got a beige jacket and boggly eyes. I can't imagine anything so beautiful making a smell. I think I'd forgive him everything. Mm -hmm. He's gorgeous. So, so when does he do his farts? Mainly at night time, when it's relaxed. Yeah. Either when we're sitting down for dinner yeah. or when we're like this on a sofa watching TV. So, is he likely to let one go while he's here now? Well, he could do, but it's the more relaxed he is, the more, you know, the more chance. Although he's starting to look a bit relaxed now, so we might do it. <laughs> His eyes go watery, and then he, when, he, when he starts closing them, then, you know, that's when you get the warning signal. <laughs> Hopefully, Mark has got a gas mask to hand, and I just hope that he can help you and Columbo. Oh, thanks, Joe. Good luck. Easy. <laughs> Time for Mark to get to the bottom of what's up with Columbo. I've got to ask, it's definitely him, right? <laughs> That's what everyone says, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. Um, Gas produced by dogs, cats, humans, every animal is a, is a kind of a mixture of swallowed air, and mm. we call that aerophagia, literally swallowing air, and the products of bacterial fermentation of ingested foodstuffs. Okay. When a dog eats or drinks too quickly, swallowed air makes it to the intestines at top speed, leading to excessive gas coming out the other end. 
So the first question for you is, does he swallow air? Does he gulp air? Does he eat quickly? Yeah, he, he'll clear his bowl um, within you know, a, few, a few minutes. It's gone as soon as it's down. The type of food you feed your pet can also have an impact on the kind of gas and how smelly it is. A diet high in fibre and fat will cause whiffy wind, as will beans and scrambled eggs. OK, so we're going to feed him little and often and change his bowl so he can't gulp the food down. Yeah. Um, and also we're going to find a diet where there's less soya bean, there's less fibre, there's more meat, it's more digestible, it's healthier for him and doesn't have as much stuff in it that the bacteria are going to break down and cause gases and hopefully have a house that's less smelly and a bit more bearable. That would be good. Thank you very much. All right. The next pet shame appointment is riding into town. 19-year-old Toby might look as fit as a stallion, but he's got an unusual problem. It's a bit like uh, green foam coming out from the mouth. Toby drools excessively, and Jerry and Kaylee have been at the slimy front line. Just generally his, his saliva, all, all chomped up, so it's a little bit frothy and bubbly. Uh, obviously, that mixed with grass, hay and his food turns into this green slime, kind of. Kind of slurry. Yes. <laughs> I've had it down the back of my neck, down my shirt. Uh, I had it in my socks. I've got it on my shoes now and on my trousers. <laughs> um, pretty much any time you deal with Toby, you're going to get some of that slobber somewhere. Jerry and Kaylee help run a charity called Horse World that takes in abandoned and neglected horses and ponies. These animals are looked after and rehabbed with a view to them being rehomed with new caring owners. If an animal has got a trait or a quirk or something like that, we always make sure we alert people. Ooh. You're talking to. We always alert people to that trait, and we've certainly always done that with Toby. We always said, you know, that he does have this slobbery thing. But it's not until they come out here and actually see it and think, actually, this is really not what I want. And it's at that stage that they say, thanks, but no thanks. Ugh. So far, Toby has yet to find a loving home and has been stuck at Horse World for six years. Jerry and Kaylee are worried that he could end up saddled with this problem long term. Oh, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Jerry. I'm Jerry. Hello. This is Kaylee. Hi, yeah, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Oh, and this is Toby. This is Toby, you're right. He's actually quite clean muzzle just now. But, yeah, he's um, not doing it at the moment, he's is not. he? And so has, yeah. has it ever gone in your face? It's, it's, <laughs> yes, it's gone in my face and, and gone in my mouth. No, what yeah, was that yeah. like? It tastes horrible. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on him to make yeah, sure he's not drooling, and if he is, I'm stopping my smile and my mouth is shutting. <laughs> well, hopefully, Mark, our vet, might be able to come up with something, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, what he says. Will the future be rosy for Toby? It's time for our vet, Mark Abraham, to take the reins. Hi there. Hello. Does it happen any particular time of year? It does. It seems to be worse in the spring and summer. That's okay. when we see it most of all. And do you see it every year at that sort of time? Yeah, we see it every year. Because that kind of gives us even more clues, because it sounds like a seasonal type of allergy. Just like humans, horses develop allergies, and they can have reactions to everything from moulds and spores in the air to grain and insect bites. <laughs> allergies mm -hmm. can show up as loss of appetite, itching or rubbing, particularly the mane and tail, but you can also spot one in a chronic cough. Mark's hunch is that Toby's drooling could be a reaction to clover Toby has been eating in the fields. Clover slobbers is a reaction to a chemical irritant, and the chemical irritant in Toby's case is the mycotoxin. It's like a fungus that attacks clover. Uh, the horses who love clover, for example, Toby, yeah, they they'll eat, 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 and the chemicals in the mycotoxins in the mould will react with the tissues inside the mouth and the throat, and they'll produce this excessive salivation. As well as testing the clover for toxins, Mark also wants to recommend Toby to an equine specialist to carry out a full examination. Find out later how Toby gets on. Coming up, Mark gets to grips with a killer ferret. They sound like the worst pets you could ever have. Columbo hits the dance floor. He likes the ladies. That's the ladies. Columbo, come on. And Toby's tests get underway. We use this medieval contraption. 